Baby, this is real food, real life. Now, CJ could never have foods that he, you know, couldn't so-called have. Now, his body is such a fine-tuned working machine that we don't have any problems. His gut is healed. Right. It's not leaky and permeable. That's why I said it's the digestive system is directly connected to the immune system. They are one, absolutely one, and they work together. When your gut is leaky, meaning there's little pinholes of food that's, un that's undigested, getting through those pinholes into the bloodstream, your body doesn't know if that's undigested chicken or popcorn. It thinks it's a virus or a bacteria. It's foreign. So the immune system comes out and takes a picture of it and says, okay, next time you come in here, I'm going to have an allergic response. I'm going to elevate the heart rate. I'm going to have watery eyes or runny nose or eczema patches pop out. You name it. It's right. different for everybody. Right. Yes. When CJ was born, he was born with a compromised immune system. And with that compromised immune system, he became allergic to every single thing that he was eating. So it's like I could not get his body to stop and enjoy that carrot or enjoy that spinach or enjoy that salad because his body would actually develop an allergy to almost everything he ate. And the more he ate that one particular item, he would become more allergic. How is it that this kind of snowballing effect kind of stopped for him? I mean, how does one's body stop reacting in an allergen way? Is it really the way when you ferment something, you put in good bacteria into your body? Explain how when someone adds in good bacteria into their body, how it actually affects the allergen process. Well, it's basically digestion. When you are able to digest your food, you don't send undigested food. It insults the microvilli and the villi in the small intestine. They become inflamed and they become unhappy and uncomfortable. Then they sort of lose their, what should I say, that per, there's permeability in that membrane. We lose the function of that small intestinal membrane. And as I said, things get through that shouldn't, okay? And that or is- Or can't get out. Uh, I find that, you know, a lot of these kids like CJ, they couldn't go to the bathroom. Right. So when all that's going on, it also, why doesn't it release either? Why don't you? The body will hold on to a stool or some feces to get everything it can out of it and it won't let it go because in the large intestine, this is the ascending large intestine here, that's really not waste yet. We don't get waste until we hit the transverse, the turn at the liver here, okay? We really don't get waste until here. Here, this bile from the liver is reabsorbed, saliva is reabsorbed, water is reabsorbed. So if the body won't let that go, it's reabsorbing everything it can. And it's basically trying to get the nutrition out of the almost waste before it becomes waste so this person is not malnourished. And that's when it creates very dry, impacted feces or, or waste to move through the rest of the, the colon. And it's very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable.